so hello guys welcome to the part 2 of the video where we will talk about comment intervention and investment barrier where political reason economic reason international trade tariff and non-tariff barrier and fti barrier concept of socio-cultural environment why culture matters in international business and managing the cultural differences so first we have government intervention and investment barrier so it is done to achieve the political economic and social objective it creates trade barrier that benefit a specific interest group like domestic firms industries labor union the objective is to create the job by protecting the industries from the foreign competition government intervention is motivated by motivated by protectionism where it refers to the national economic policy where there is to control the free trade and protect the domestic industry from the foreign competition so protectionism is manifested by the tariff and non-tariff barrier there are two reasons for the government intervention political political reasons and economic reasons now political reasons for the government intervention it is concerned with the protecting the interest of the certain group within a country achieving the political objective that lies outside of the economic area such as protecting ecology environment and human rights where protecting the job and industry job and industry so over here government has a responsibility to to protect the employment and domestic industry from the unfair competition if unemployment rate is increased and foreign product adversely affect the domestic market then the political protest against the government is increased next is protecting the consumer and buyer where the protect against the unsafe unfair and fake goods wto permits the country government to reject the foreign product import so where being the part of sanitary and phytosanitary measures sps next is ensuring the national security where the government intervene to protect certain industry for the national security and defense related or cottage scale industry next is retaliation retaliating against the unfair foreign competition where the government used the threat to intervene the trade policy as bargaining tool to force the foreign country to play by the rule of the game where the u.s government threat to take the punitive puni punitive sanction as penalty against the china to protect the intellectual property right like copyright patent and trademark so further furthering foreign policy objective is to protect the foreign policy objective government may use the trade policy example design its trade policy to give the preferential trading facility to a country which aims to build a close relation next is protecting the human rights with the government intervention on the business of the trade and investment is to force the country to recognize and protect the human right in the in their country now we have economic reasons for the government intervention where it is concerned with the promoting the overall wealth of the nation to overall overall benefit for the both buyers and sellers it is protecting the infant and indigenous industry where the government should support the domestic industry because they are not ready to compete with the foreign companies the government may provide the subsidy subsidies and other safeguard measures in the favor of domestic firm such that they can stand strong it is concerned with implementing the strategic trade policy so implementing a strategic trade policy it is done as suggest that subsidy can help the domestic firm to gain the first mover advantage in the global industry where the economies of the scale is important the government through the strategic trade policy can help to raise the country's national now we have government intervention and international trade so trade barriers there are two types tariff and non tariff under tariff we have two types import duties and official prices so under import duties we have two types primary import tariff and secondary import tariff now under primary import tariff there is three types add value rem duty specific tariff compound tariff in secondary import tariff we have countervailing tariff and anti dumping tariff 
under the non tariff barrier there is non tariff barrier with direct pricing effect and another is non tariff barrier with control quality control effect so under the direct price effect there is subsidies aids and control custom custom valuation under the quality control effect there is quotas border regulation and standard by local legislation specific permission required and reciprocal requirement now the instrument used by the government to create the trade barrier are tariff and non tariff barrier talking about first tariff barrier it is defined as the tax or duties laid on the imported goods primarily for the purpose of raising their selling price in importing the national market to reduce the competition for the domestic product it is done to favor the domestic producers and the government it is done to protect the domestic producer and also to enlarge the government revenue there are two types import duties and official prices now first talking about import duties and tariffs so duty imposed by the country on the imported country known as import duties so the tariff is mostly limited to the imports the first is primary import tariff where it apply to all except where there is zero tariff and its types are uh, an ad polarem duty it is the import duty laid as the percentage of the invoice value of the imported goods the term ad polarem means according to the value next we have a specific duty where it is import based on where it is import based duty where the fixed sum of money is lived on the physical unit of imported goods where a specific import is specific to quantity of the import for example 1 dollar per gallon cost rupees rs2 per ton next we have compound duty where it is the combination of a specific and ad valorem duty it is also known as combined rate where duty are on value based and quantity based next we have secondary import tariff where it applies to the specific import condition only for example countervailing duty it is charged on the import goods to which exporters country have given subsidy and it is imposed by the importing nation on the imports that enjoy the subsidy in exporting country such a duty compensate for the special competitive advantage of the subsidy it is allowed for the exporters government next we have anti dumping duty where add it is a special duty imposed on the imported goods to protect on affected domestic industry from injury caused by the sale of dumped goods in importing country the wto agreement on anti dumping allow member nation to charge the same duty to discourage the unfair trade practice in the world when dumping is the main cause to injure the local farm producing so when tariff is temporary it is called tariff surcharge now we have non tariff barrier all this form of discrimination against the import to other than the import duties on the basis of influence there are two types non tariff barrier with a direct uh, price influence where they influence the price of the goods for example subsidies so subsidies are the direct payment to the domestic company by the government to compensate them for the losses and expenses incurred from selling abroad they are basically meant for the making companies or the product more competitive in the international business next we have aids and loans where the government gives aids and loans to the country to make their product competitive in those recipient countries such fund assistant is also known as tied aid or loan tied up is important in winning the large contract infrastructure for example telecom railway and hydro next we have custom valuation where it is difficult for the custom officials to determine if invoice prices are honest or not they may be arbitrarily increase the value and other valuation procedure they can control the trade now we have non tariff barrier with the quality control effect so import quotas the import quotas are the numerical limits based on the specific classes of import that is 
numerical limit to a specific kind of the product that a country will permit to be imported without a restriction during the specified period next is voluntary for example over here voluntary export restraint it is the self imposed import quota it is a type of import quota imposed by exporting nations typically at a request of importing countries for example us requested japan to put a limitation in the automobile export where japan limited itself to 1.68 million vehicles per year now we have by local legislation where introduced by local laws where government sometimes implements the law for giving preference to the domestic product that is they specify a content restriction they that a certain percent of the product is of local origin now we have border regulation standard where importing country government can do the can do impose in its rules and regulation on border administration such a regulation include the product standard certification like iso certification sanitary and phytosanitary sps standard for the human health and the plant and animal health next there is environment certificates like ce like eco level social clauses like provision on the use of the child labor next there is specific permission requirement where the con when the country require that potential importer or exporter they must ensure the permission from the government authority before conducting any trade transaction such a requirement is known as import license and the requirement is the foreign exchange control in which it requires importers of the certain product to apply to the government agency to make sure the foreign currency to pay for the product now we have reciprocal requirement under this provision exporters promise to buy and buy goods and services from the country to which the country export this requirement is common in aerospace and defense industry mostly be, because the importers is sort of foreign currency to purchase what it wants next we have government intervention on fti barrier with the foreign investment have both positive good and bad impact on the country economy and the society where the government use this policy for promoting and discouraging inward inward fti there are two forms barrier to inward fti and barrier to outward fti where we will discuss about the barrier to toward inward fti where there is restrict to fti inward in the host country where the whole host country can use the wide range of barrier to restrict the inward investment in the foreign country there is ownership restraint to restrict the flow of foreign investment the foreign investment and technology transfer act fitta prohibits foreign investor to take the investment in the handicraft and cottage industry airlines tracking real estate and legal and management consultancy it is done for two reasons on the ground of national security and competition and beliefs of the local owners to maximize the resource transfer and employment benefit next we have performance requirement where the there is barrier to fdi flow that control the behavior of the multinational local subsidy it is concerned with the local content requirement lcr technology transfer and export now government require foreign investor to use certain portion of local content bring in substantial technology to the host country export certain amount of the product hire the certain number of top level managers and it is done to for minimizing the fti and maximizing the benefit now barrier to outward fti where restricted outward investment from home country to the host country as one common barrier is to limit the capital outflow of the country for country's balance of payment so second it is done as there is occasional tax rules to discourage the investor towards investing abroad now we have socio cultural environment 
we are talking about culture it is the complex set of rules custom value idea and values and meaningful symbol created by the human beings to shape the human behavior that are transmitted from one generation to another another the culture is shared dynamic invented and organized and learned a company a company needs a culture knowledge because number of foreign function is increasing number of country operation is increasing and movement from external to internal handling operation so why culture matters in international business first reason there is varying communication implications where the manager need to understand the implications of the various aspects of the culture verbal communication use the words and have meaning non verbal are interpreted and perceived different by the different cultural groups so first talking about kindness kindness so it is study of the body physical movement face eye gesture posture physical appearance etc for example thumbs up is well done in usa and offensive in greece next is proximis so it means nearness in the space and the time it involves personal space in how and in how and what we arrange it the personal space language it is estimated that up to 18 inch intimate personal up to 4 feet social 12 feet and public 12 feet and plus in usa 5 to 7 feet for the business is considered good but in latin america 3 to 5 feet for the business next we have time language where there is uh, chrono chronemics which refers to the time verbal exchange american uh, expect quick response in the business and uncomfortable at slow response whereas japanese seek quiet time for the response and decision making next we have physical context where it refers to how color and layout can communicate in the context of our environment for example black and gray convey the negative feeling and blue and yellow positive feeling layout and design of the surrounding is concerned with the arrangement of the desk chair office size cabin furniture and etc next we have haptics so it is about the touch language it refers to the touch while talking face to face well latino women expect to touch the hand shoulder hair face which is not good message in nepalese society now we have varying impact of social social attitude and behavior on international behavior so it is important for ib manager to be aware of socio cultural behavior of the people in the different countries where there is fast behavioral practice where there is social stratification social class nature of motivation relationship preference in the organization risk taking behavior next there is cultural practice like ethnic ethnicities as difference language as stabilizer religion as stabilizer now we are pairing csr and ethical standard where the so, where the societies culture certainly can have impact on propensity of the people and the form to behave in ethical and unethical manner for example in usa it is not acceptable ethically socially and legally in the arm industry business now next we have impact of socio cultural nonsense so no nonsense means emotional behavioral tone of the people affect their bargaining behavior which ib manager should understand for doing negotiation in the business it is not possible until the manager have good understanding of the culture in the various country next we have varying customer reaction to the market where the customer reaction to the form in forms market and advertisement across the culture the manager needs to develop the good understanding of the culture in the country they operate so that they can predict the customer reaction to make the effort but some might hurt sometimes for example put us pictures on the boards and slippers now managing the cultural differences so first reason is managing the cultural shock so many people get frustrated when entering into the new culture things become hard as they pay, as they learn to 
as they need to learn and copy with the vast new cultural cues the cultural shock hap happening is natural but time heals it so recovering cultural shock is time requirement so reverse shock it is the culture shock passes if a person stays in a new culture to understand it and get used to it some people encounter the shock when they return back to their home after a long time gap so it is called the reverse shock where it happens as they learn to accept what is encountered abroad next is managing company or management orientation where there is first ethnocentrism where it is believed that one country's culture is superior than other country belief that the what work at home is done is done at the host country as well ignoring the environmental differences next is regiocentrism where the firm adopts the regional cultural in management where covering a group of a country live in the comparable cultural characteristics for example in south asia the premarital sex or live in a relation is discouraged next we have polycentrism where full it fully adapts the business practice to foreign country and culture where whatever it operates it carries no home country culture it is to adopt the local culture of the foreign country it is done to control the centralized and manager is free to conduct business in any way he wants next we have geocentrism it is the hybrid of polycentrism ethnocentrism and regional centrism where it uses business practices that are hybrid of the home and the foreign norms of the culture it is usually recommended for example if a chief had adapted himself into the local requirement of nepal his bank would not have lose highly valuable customer geocentric is recommended in the case of cultural differences thank you that is the end of this topic make sure you like comment and subscribe you guys are amazing keep reading